So this is going to be a quick case discussion, uh, unlike uh, the previous elaborate discussions uh, that we have had. Uh, for those who are new uh, today, uh, you guys can check all our case discussions uh, on our previous uh, uh, lectures. Uh, uh, we have around, I think, eight uh, uh, detailed case discussions and uh, five uh, kind of spotter case discussions where we discuss uh, short cases and uh, their quick relevant findings. So this is going to be a, I'll show you a PACS-based case. I'll give some time for you to look at the case and uh, think about the diagnosis and I'll quickly discuss uh, the relevant pathology. I think uh, uh, it's time. Uh, I'll start sharing the case. And if there's any issues uh, with the case or the audio, please let me know in the comment section. OK, so good morning, good evening, good night. Welcome, uh, depending on uh, whatever part of the world you're watching, uh, watching this stream. OK, so this is the case. I hope you guys are able to see the case. Uh, this was a young patient with uh, breast cancer who presented with uh, 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 we did a CT for her, a staging CT. Uh, this is her CT images. I'll uh, move. Uh, I'll scroll through the important findings. So, what we saw here uh, were bilateral adnexal cystic lesions, uh, and uh, apart from that, we saw something else. So uh, the adnexal findings are not the uh, uh, finding that I'm trying to show. Uh, if there's anything else that catches your eye, uh, let me know. Uh, I do also have an MRI for this patient. So I'll go over that as well. I'll stop at the... So as I said, this is a breast cancer patient presented with bilateral cystic lesions. Okay, so this is the uh, finding that I want you guys to look at. So there's this cystic lesion in her uh, right inguinal canal. And uh, because she had bilateral cystic uh, ovarian lesions, uh, we were wondering what this is. And even the ovarian lesions, some of them had a uh, apparent enhancement along its periphery. So we thought that this should be evaluated further with MRI. So these are the MRI images. I'll go over the T2 weighted images. So there is a multi-loculated cystic lesion in the right inguinal region. Uh, and uh, those, and we again see those cystic uh, bilateral adnexal lesions. Just zoom in. Okay, so uh, you guys can type in your answers uh, in the comment sections. So what we see here is a cystic uh, multiloculated lesion in the uh, right inguinal region. And on, I'll just show the post contrast. So these are the post contrast axial T1 fat saturated images. So that was the anomaly uh, that we picked up. And uh, uh, in fact, even I got biased in this case, and I uh, thought that this is a uh, necrotic or, say, metastatic uh, inguinal node, although in, say, ovaries, typically we do not see uh, inguinal nodes because that's not the drainage pathway. But uh, uh, that's what I thought. Uh, so we've getting a few. Uh, so Dr. Allah has attempted uh, your close, although, but that's not the uh, correct answer. Uh, so I hope you guys are uh, able to appreciate the uh, anomaly here. Uh, Dr. Marwa says about uh, a herniated ovary. Uh, that would be unlikely because we do see these adnexal uh, lesions here. And if we trace the ovarian vessels, they are leading up to this. So the right ovary is where it is, but that's a great differential. Endometriosis is also a good differential, although that would be very atypical to have uh, endometriosis in that region but that's again a very good differential okay so i hope that everybody has seen the case i'll go over the images once again so in a ca breast patient with bilateral cystic and nexal lesions uh, we found a cystic uh, abnormality in the right inguinal canal <sighs> OK, 
Okay, inclusion cyst. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a typical location for that. Uh, so what this was uh, was a, a cyst of the canal of Nuck. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Dr. Ala mentioned uh, previously, this is uh, the spectrum of the same abnormalities. So, what happens is that uh, there is an extension of the uh, parietal uh, peritoneum that goes along the round ligament into the in-vein canal. Just as that ha happens in the male patients, we have a processus vaginalis which obliterates uh, and if it doesn't obliterate, it gives rise to a spectrum of hernia hydrocele uh, pathologies. Uh, we have discussed these in details in our latest discussion i leave a link to that in uh, uh, the uh, i leave a card to that in the corner so uh, so this uh, evagination of the parietal peritoneum in the females is known as the canal of nuck if it remains completely patent it is an avenue for indirect inguinal hernia if the canal is obliterated at its upper and lower end uh, but its middle portion remains patent. Sometimes fluid can accumulate in that and give rise to something known as the canal of nux cyst. This is a benign pathology uh, and uh, uh, it may or may not show enhancement and loculations, which is uh, okay. So that's nothing to be worried about. So it's kind of a touch me not lesion unless the patient is symptomatic, which can be in cases of infection. But otherwise, this is a completely benign finding. I mistook it for an. Uh, necrotic inguinal node but I was corrected by my staff so only if the uh, if uh, the lower portion gets obliterated and the upper portion is open uh, so uh, its lower portion is open its upper portion is not obliterated uh, that can give rise to a encysted hydrocele and if only the uh, lower portion is obliterated uh, that will give rise to uh, a fluid collection communicating with the peritoneal cavity, which is known as. So if there is a fluid filled uh, cavity in a female communicating into the inguinal canal, uh, what would that pathology be known as? Okay, funicular process. So here I meant that if only the upper portion is obliterated, so the uh, uh, when the canal doesn't communicate with the uh, apologies for this, I'll just correct it. Uh, so when the upper portion uh, is obliterated, uh, what we get rise to a encysted hydrocele or an infantile hydrocele. When uh, only the lower portion is obliterated, we get something known as a hydrocele of the canal of Cus. Uh, hydrocele of the canal of NUC. So this is a companion case to that, uh, uh, as Dr. Allah mentioned uh, previously, and Dr. Vivek has also got it right. So what we see here is a cystic uh, fluid uh, intensity lesion, which goes towards the left inguinal canal. So that this is the case of hydrocele of uh, uh, the uh, left uh, canal of NUC. Uh, so this is a nice uh, uh, illustration uh, from uh, this article. Uh, you can check it out later uh, even the article is quite elaborate so uh, it's a nice read uh, so this is the normal side in the normal side uh, what happens is that uh, the canal of NUC extends along the uh, round ligament and uh, reaches up to the labia majora in females uh, normally the entire portion gets obliterated uh, that and that happens by the first year of life. Uh, if that doesn't obliterate at some part, that will give rise to various pathologies. So for example, if it gets obliterated these two portions, but this is patent, this will give rise to a cyst of canal of NUC. If it is open here, but it closes inferiorly, this will give rise to a hydrocele of the canal of NUC. And if this portion is obliterated, but Inferiorly, it is patent. It can give rise to a encysted hydrocele. So uh, that was a short case and a quick discussion. Uh, hope you guys uh, learned something new today. And as always, uh, if you like the case, uh, please hit the thumbs up button. If you don't like it, uh, 
press the thumbs down and let me know in the comment section what we can improve about this and let us know if you like this new format of quick 10 minute case discussion uh, uh, and uh, versus our long format case discussion uh, thank you guys and i'll see you in the uh, next case discussion